Hi guys, Patrick here with Centropy Chiropractic Training, where our vision is to create the best adjusters on the planet. So if you joined us the last time, we were talking about tonic rigidity and ways that we can improve our speed and more than anything, improve our relaxation in our body. And we worked on focusing on working the calcium pumps and teaching our muscles to switch off faster, which basically that lowers the internal resistance and allows you to create more speed. So this time the topic we want to discuss is about coordination rigidity. So tonic rigidity is the baseline tone of your muscles all the time. Coordination rigidity has to do more with a skilled movement. So what happens in the people who do not have a skill set developed, well, we have not yet developed those neural pathways to create the greatest efficiency. And what will happen is you'll have your antagonist resist the movement more than you should. Okay, so if we want to develop the maximum speed, precision, power, then what we need to do is drill the specific pathway but in a way that's gonna have the antagonist shut off, okay? For example, if I'm going with my um, triceps, trying to do a cervical move as quickly as possible, or a side posture move, then we wanna make sure that all the flexors in the arm, our uh, wrist flexors, our bicep, that all of that gets shut off, okay? So there's a couple of things you wanna to do to do that. There's about three rules I wanna cover with you, and the first is that always, always, always train against resistance. Okay, what does that mean? It means that you don't want to do punches in the air or shadow boxing. Okay, we're not training our nervous system to pull punches. What we want to do is fire through a target or fire through and towards an external target. So we want our, uh, basically the object that we're moving towards to be beyond the segment that we're adjusting. Whether you're breaking a board, if you're playing pool, if you're shooting free throws, follow through is everything. So we do not want to train the nervous system to stop that movement. So number one, always against resistance. We have a lot of different methods we use at the seminars that we'll share with you, but just keep that in mind. Push-ups were great for that because you have some level of resistance. Uh, bands, there's all types of things we can put into practice. Second thing is variable speed. Okay, what does that mean? If you're consistently and constantly training at the high end of your speed, then you're developing a groove in your nervous system and you're, what's, you're creating what's called a speed barrier. So if you're always training as fast as you can go, your nervous system gets locked into that. So you wanna train very smooth, easy movement and accelerate more and more as you go and then basically keep, um, keep uh, waving that speed. You don't wanna have one set speed. So going as fast as you can all the time isn't gonna help you. I would err on the side of doing more precision rather than speed in the beginning. As you develop the skill set and you start developing the neuroplasticity to fire these muscles in a certain way, these ingrams, these motor movements, your cerebellum becomes much, much, much more efficient. Central pattern generators can take over, but you wanna practice perfection, okay? If you wanna get really good at tennis and you wanna get really good at, at, a, at a serve, you don't go out there and serve until you can't lift your arm anymore. It makes no sense. You're not trying to go as hard as possible. You're trying to build skill. If you build skill, speed will come. Promise you, guaranteed. And the third thing that's absolutely important, it goes along those lines of a speed barrier, is you must stop whenever you notice any slowing down or any level of tension, okay? So if you start to notice tension in your jaw or your face or your arms or anywhere, and you feel that you're starting to slow down a little bit, stop immediately, go back, do the exercise that we did last week, shake out the tension, give your nervous system a chance to rest, and then come back at it again. Start slow again, slow and precise, against resistance, build that speed up, go a bit faster, a bit faster. At any hint of your form breaking down or any hint of slowing down or any hint of tension building up, stop, okay? There is no sense in going and doing 100 push-ups if the last 50 are slow and hard, okay? So in any exercise you wanna do, go find out about how many you can do and keep your speed up the second you begin to get any tension or slow down, take that number and do about 70% or even half of that number. So if you can do 50 solid push-ups, fast push-ups, before you start to slow down, then start doing sets of 25. And between sets, shake it out. Go to another exercise, okay? Vary it up. Don't build that speed barrier in there. It will make all the difference in the world because skill, is really the difference and skill is just repetition but doing quality reps practice doesn't make perfect perfect practice makes perfect so don't put in sloppy reps that's the worst thing you can do 
Um, so make sure and check out the last video if you missed that on tonic rigidity because these two together will really help you. So take those exercises from last time, learn to shake out all the muscles, and then do your skill sets against resistance, variable speed, and stop at any sign of slowing down or tension, okay? Um, the next video that I wanna address is about will adjustments over adjusting make ligaments lax, okay? That's been coming up over and over. We've actually even heard that from some chiropractors. Just physiologically impossible uh, for so many reasons. I'm gonna jump into a bit of the research and why that's not possible next time because we need to wipe that out of the consciousness of chiropractors. It's just not true. And if that's the case, we need to look at our technique. So if you'd like to join us, our next upcoming seminars, we have the occipital lift we're gonna be doing in Barcelona. That's at the end of July, next week. We're doing July 21st and 22nd. In London, we will be in London at Heathrow, September 15th and 16th. We'll be doing our module A full spine. So we'll be doing supine cervicals, cervical thoracic junction, side posture SI joints, and anterior lumbars, as well as anterior thoracics. In Paris, We'll be in Paris September the 22nd and 23rd. That will be for Module B. Module B, Module A is not a prerequisite for Module B. They are standalone modules and you can attend in any order. Module B will be seated cervicals. It will be standing rib moves, upper and lower, as well as side posture lumbars. So we'll be covering all of that information. And we'd love to have you. Come check us out at uh, centropychirotraining.com. We'd love to see you soon.